What's up guys? Hey, how we doing? Hey, I hate to be that guy, but Hayden Deegan got totally screwed by the AMA today. But I'll explain all that. But if you want to be on Coach Rob's team, get your resume in Complete Racing Solutions. Uh, he's accepting or, uh, resumes all this month for 2024. If you want to get your garage looking badass, hit up, hit up Epic Garage Designs, flooring, slat wall, whatever you need to make it look badass. If you need some goggles or a cool shirt like this, hit up Ride Strapped or Strapped. Uh, they got the famous Let's Go branding goggles. And if you want to ship something via truck uh, and you're tired of dealing with trucking companies, hit up Precision Transport. And if you want to be a sponsor of the Cooksy Media Show, uh, just hit me up at chriscooksymedia at gmail.com. Pretty sure we got an opening coming up in September if you want to join the show. Just one though, we're keeping them limited. All right, guys, let's get into this. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. I want to start by just sending my best to Hardy Munoz. Hardy Munoz has taken a beating. Like, I, I mean, if you just go back through his highlight reel of how many times this dude's hit the ground, I genuinely am worried about his well-being. He was, he was carted off at Colorado. Like, that's two times in this outdoor season that I've seen him go off on a stretcher. He's probably too tough for his own good. But, man, I'm just, he did give a thumbs up on his way out and I hope he's okay. With that said, I'm also 100% okay with them stopping the race. Whenever it comes to safety and you know dealing with a rider who's in a bad position or they need to get medical people, whatever they need to do, stop the race, I don't care, I'll never complain about that. What I'm gonna complain about is this dumb ass rule that has slid through the suggestion book. That's what they call it, the rule book. They call it the suggestion book. That's directly from MX Sports uh, headman Davy Coombs. It's kind of a guy. I'm sorry. He called it a guideline book is what he said. It needs to be an actual rule book, but I'm not complaining because they did follow the guideline book to a T. The problem is nobody's updated this stupid thing. It's like you can't. Okay. Every other form of racing, Supercross, World Supercross, Arena Cross, all these other series. If you put in like half the race and you're not going to do a complete restart and do the, the full amount, you stagger start so how do you take 15 minutes off of a moto and then do a complete restart that doesn't make any sense whatsoever so what you're telling me is the first 15 minutes didn't matter you're not scoring laps you're not scoring anything um i could have just sat that out waited yeah i know you nobody knows it's gonna red flag but hypothetically i could have sat that out went back to the line and did a 15 minute moto fresh and perfect that does not seem correct to me. You've got to update the rule book. Just do what Supercross does and just do a staggered start. Yes, it still sucks that they're bunched up, but every other form of racing, NASCAR, everything else, that's what happens. You bunch them up when there's a, a caution or something, but you can't just completely restart, especially in a sport of like motocross, where it is a gated start, where there is not much of an advantage. Yes, you get a gate pick, but that's so minimal. Anyone in the top 15, there's really no advantage. You get a little bit better rut, but that's about it. So poor Hayden Deegan. I mean, that, that had to be frustrating and it's stressful and you have this adrenaline dump and I can't imagine. And this is where him being young really comes into effect. You could see when he didn't get the jump on that second start, he just, instead of, instead of doing what Hunter does, because Hunter's a seasoned veteran, he's been around for a long time, he panicked and he just went in deep and tried to just shove it in there and he ran, ran into Vial and, you know, it's a learning experience in the future, but but then again, he's going, I've only got 15 minutes. How am I gonna make up this time? It's a really, it was a really crappy situation that hopefully they'll update the rule book because this rule book's ridiculous. Now they're changing it for SMX, the super duper. I'll get into that in a video this week. Apparently the money for super duper is now going to the teams, not the riders, but it's just a cluster. I don't know how you can change it in the middle when you've already announced it for one way, wait till the season's over and then do it for next year. I, I'm actually not against paying teams, but I'll do a whole video on that later on when I get more information. Um, we're trying to figure out exactly how privateers get their money and what teams get it and was it the team you qualified for, but yeah. But Hunter Lawrence did exactly what a champion does. He kept his composure. He did exactly what he needed to do. In fact, he kept his composure when Justin Cooper laid the wood to him. And that's what these guys need to do. They're way behind. He's 22 points, Justin Cooper's 22 points behind Hunter. 
take him out if you can. That's what I would do. That's what I think most people would do. Um, Hunter clearly didn't appreciate it. You could see it in his body language for those next few turns, but it's like he caught himself and gathered and goes, okay, you know what? No, I'm just going to ride. And, you know, he tried to catch him, but he, he takes a second when he needs to. That's what he's done. And let me just break down where Hunter's come from this season. Hunter started this season after having a nasty crash. He wasn't even sure if he was going to race Paula because his ribs and everything, he was banged up. But he has got in there and done veteran type stuff. Then he gets this huge point lead. Then there's the uh, the bike malfunction, you know, bike breaks at Southwick. And, or actually before that is Red Bud, that huge crash in the first turn where we think it's over. He walks off holding his wrist, thinking his wrist is broken, re injures his ribs. Then he goes to Southwick, battling through the pain, goes all the way to the last two minutes, his bike blows up. Um, and he's still battling through and he's still got a 22 point lead heading into the final round with all that adversity. So don't tell me Hunter lucked into this. Hunter earned this thing with pure grit, determination, and let's be honest, he's the best guy. He should be the champion. And I'm about 99% sure he closes this thing out at Ironman next week. But Justin Cooper, I commend him on that move. That move was awesome. That's exactly what he needs to do. It wasn't dirty, but it sure wasn't clean. If you're Hunter, you're pissed. But if you're J. Coop, you go, well, I had to get by, and you know, it is what it is. So good on J. Coop. Uh, he, just, he just doesn't quite have enough for Hunter. When Hunter, when it matters, he does what champions do, and he stepped it up and got the overall. That's, that's Hunter Lawrence for you. Um, it's, it's fun to watch. I've never seen domination like this with two brothers, um, but I'll do another video on the 450s later. How about my boy Jalik Swole? Jalik Swole got out there, led some laps, and let's not say it was just because of the restart because he was up there before the red flag. He was good. Um, he didn't have a good second moto, but he was good the first half and after the restart. Got a moto, got his first podium moto finish of the year. So good on Jalik Swole. Um, Nice way to build momentum going into the SMX. And that's the thing is it's kind of cool. This super duper has done what it was supposed to do. And I've said this a hundred times. And even Austin Forkner, Austin Forkner, he could be a problem in super duper guys. He may end up winning this whole thing from the LCQ. It's weird though, at this LCQ, he's gonna have to go, he's gonna have to qualify every round. So he can't have any failures in the LCQ. Or I don't know, maybe they'll change the rules. Who knows how that's gonna go. But yeah, it's nice to see Austin Forkner, who at Anaheim earlier this year when he blew out his knee and had that nasty wreck, a lot of us thought, I even did a video and said that might be the end of Austin Forkner, but clearly his demise was too early. He, he is actually, he's gonna fight back and he's gonna battle and he's gonna do whatever it takes to, to get himself back to his winning ways. It was nice to see all the rookies out there, Julian Bomer, Daxon Bennett, Mark Phineas. Although I have to say, I'm sorry, Mark Vinayas, um, I'm sure he'll probably watch this, but that interview he did was borderline creepy with his eyes way open. And um, Daniel Blair, that's your guy. Please work with him on the interviews. That was tough. That was uh, that looked like, uh, I don't know, it, it looked like they were interviewing a serial killer and he was trying to break it down. People would probably think I'm feeling a little excited, maybe nervous, and I'm not really feeling much of nothing because I've kind of gotten to a headspace to where I'm just kind of almost numb and I don't want to be too excited because excitement causes mistakes and crashes so I'm going to try to be as mellow as possible coming into this thing yeah it, it was weird so Daniel please work with him on his interviews I'm sure he's a great kid and he wrote his ass off he got some points in the first moto I don't know what happened in the second moto but uh yeah he'll, he's got a bright future in my opinion he's going to be a good 250 rider moving forward so watching the AMA handle that situation it just had me giggling you see all these officials standing on the starting line and you can see their body language like they're like wait this doesn't seem right like it didn't feel right to them the rule by re-racking them and going 15 minutes but they're like yeah that's what the rule book says so that's what they did so I, i'll give them credit for following their guideline book but it was uh it's a rule that in this off season fix this let's tighten up this actual rule book let's make it black or white Let's get rid of all these gray areas, or if you're gonna have the two series combined into one in Supercross and Motocross and offer points in both, let's have a rule book that coincides the same. I need to have the same racing rules for Supercross as I do for Motocross when it comes to situations like restarts and 
you know, stuff of that nature. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Look for the 450 video dropping tomorrow and uh, I'll catch you guys later.